driving the lincoln highway chicago to rochelle illinois in 1915 by emily post this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org mud we have struck it it looks pretty much as though our motor trip to san francisco were going to end in rochelle illinois thirty-six miles out of chicago we met the lincoln highway and from the first found it a disappointment as the most important advertised and lauded road in our country its first appearance was not engaging if it were called the cross continent trail you would expect little and be philosophical about less but the very word highway suggests macadam at the least and with such titles as transcontinental and lincoln put before it you dream of a wide straight road like the route nationale of france or state roads in the east and you wake rather unhappily to the actuality of a meandering dirt road that becomes mud half a foot deep after a day or two of rain still we went over it easily enough until we passed dekalb after that the only highway attributes left were the painted red white and blue signs decorating the telegraph poles along the way the highway itself disappeared into a wallow of mud the center of the road was slightly turtle-backed the sides were of thick black ooze and ungageably deep and the car was possessed as though it were alive to pivot around and slide backward into it we had no chains with us and had passed no places where we could get any apart from the difficulty of keeping going on the chainless tires our only danger except that of being bogged was in getting over the bridges that had no railings to their approaches the car chasséed up every one swung over toward the embankment slewed back on the bridge went across that steadily and dove into the mud again it certainly was dampening to one's ardor for motoring if the lincoln highway was like this what would the ordinary road be after it branched away at stirling a little car on ahead was slithering and sliding around too although it had four chains on it but it did not sink in very far and it was getting along much better than we were so much better in fact that at the end of a few miles it slowly wobbled beyond our sight finally we turned a bend and there was a little car on ahead not the same one however this one evidently had no chains and was coming toward us drunkenly staggering from side to side gradually the lower half of it was hidden by the incline of an intervening bridge then suddenly it disappeared altogether when we arrived at the bridge ourselves we saw the car in a deep ditch almost over on its side the occupants of it a man and a small boy were both out and nothing apparently was hurt the small boy was having a heavenly time paddling around in mud way above his knees and the man called up to us cheerfully twas my own fault i had not to come without chains on no use for you to stop thank you you couldn't help any and we'd only block the road between us a team will be along before long regretfully we left them and slipped and slid and staggered on for some miles more oh said celia in the back how are we ever going up that 
that was an awful embankment ahead which to look at made me feel as if i had eaten nothing for a week it was steep narrow turtle-backed with black slime and had a terrifying drop at either side of its treacherous and unguarded edges the car went snorting up the incline until nearly at the top point where the drop was steepest it balked and slid toward the edge this is the end i thought wondering in the same second if any of us would fall clear for one of those eternity-laden moments we seemed to hang poised on the brink then e m seemed almost to lift the huge weight of the machine around bodily and compel it in spite of its helplessness to crawl up 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 on the bridge glancing back at celia after we were safely over she looked about as chalky and weak-kneed as i felt a short distance further however we ran on the brick pavement of a town the ragged red brick buildings of the street we turned into were not very encouraging and we feared that again the blue books hotel description might be one of those complimentary ones consisting of its paid advertisement e m urged our trying to get chains and going on to davenport but celia and i had all the motoring in the mud that we cared about no matter how squalid the town or how poor the accommodations we meant to cross no more bridges like that last one until the roads dried then we made two turns like a letter z and found ourselves in the sweetest cleanest newest little town imaginable its streets were all wide and smoothly paved with brick and its houses mostly white were set each in a garden of trim and clipped green there was a new post office of marble magnificence and a shopping center of big windowed fresh painted enterprising stores but no hotel except a dingy ramshackle tavern that we took for granted was the one mentioned in the guidebook we wondered if one of the neat sweet little houses might perhaps take us to board instead in front of a garage was a man with a blue coat and brass buttons and fire chief on them we asked him if he knew anyone at whose house we could stay until the road dried he looked at us and then at the car in a quizzical sort of way oh yes he drawled you could put up at mrs blake's i guess we asked the way to mrs blake's and then happened to remark that it was curious a town as up-to-date as this one had no good hotel he lost his drawl immediately no good hotel well i just guess there is a good hotel the collier inn is just across that street and around the corner it's a fine hotel we cheered up instantly but why hadn't he told us that sooner he thought that considerin we had asked for a boarding house maybe the hotel was too high priced for us but it was a fine hotel if we didn't mind the cost i don't know how we had missed it it was a fair-sized yellow brick building on a corner a rather typical small town commercial hotel i went in expecting dingy darkness the lobby looked like the office in a main summer resort i asked not that i for a moment expected to get it for rooms with baths the proprietor said certainly and showed me three new little rooms each with a little new bathroom attached 
i returned to my companions grinning like a cheshire cat it seemed to us as though we had found a veritable ritz in rochelle twenty-four hours in a town like this and we feel as though we knew it and the people intimately in many ways it suggests a toyland town its streets are so straight and evenly laid its houses so white and shining its gardens so green its shops so freshly painted its displays in the windows so new and its people so friendly strangers in town they seem to say to themselves as they look at us but instead of looking at us in a wait until we know who you are before we take any notice of you they seem quite ready to smile and begin a conversation our most particular friend as well as our oldest acquaintance is the fire chief e m of course has one or two other particular friends in the garage if he can only find a mechanic or two to talk to he is perfectly happy celia's and my chief diversion has been going to the moving picture theatres which is evidently the fashionable thing to do here in the evening we saw three real theatre parties one of them was a very important affair they met in the lobby and went down the aisle two by two the ladies all had many diamonds brand new white kid gloves quite tight picture hats corsage bouquets and boxes of candy celia and i had neither gloves nor hats on and when we ran into the theatre parties we felt almost like urchins that had been caught wandering into the foyer of the metropolitan opera house like our hatred of caraway seeds our love of hatlessness must be a family failing in chicago two different papers took the trouble to mention e m s carelessness in the matter of head covering scorning to wear a hat even on occasions when it is generally considered to be convenable said one the other described him as such a disciple of fresh air that he was seen driving a big racing machine on michigan avenue without a hat yet isn't it a popular supposition that the west is freer from conventions than the east the rain has finally stopped and this morning the sun is trying hard to shine to do much good it will have to shine steadily for about three days we walked to the end of the brick paving down one of the streets a little while ago and looked at the black wet lincoln highway leading to sterling on our way back we met our friend the fire chief been to look at the mud asked he cheerfully it isn't a bit bad now you ought to see it when it's muddy why it took me eight hours to go twenty-one miles i did have to get a team of horses to pull me out of one bog but otherwise i got through all right didn't you strain your engine i asked him oh yes he said cheerfully i guess i did but i couldn't help that well maybe you couldn't i agreed then added with confidential finality but i tell you what we're going to do we're going to put ours on a nice dry comfortable freight car tomorrow morning and ship it past the mud district which is probably the width of the continent his warmth of manner fell suddenly to zero i feared we had in some way offended him because we thought his state muddy of course it is a lovely country to grow things in i added quickly but you see we want particularly to get to san francisco and the surest way is by freight 
but we could not put the broken conversation together again in fact our friend the fire chief doesn't smile any more our other friends the garage men also look at us askance in fact in some way we seem to have lost our popularity the weight of public opinion we know now what is the matter they think we are quitters they are so filled with a sense of shame for us that we are beginning to feel it ourselves in spite of our original intention to go only so far as roads were good and accommodations were comfortable we feel that we are somehow lacking in metal that we are sandless to say the least to explain that we are not crossing the continent as a feat of endurance is useless having started to motor to the west our stopping this side of the place we set out for is to them incomprehensible why that car ought to go through anything is all any of them can think of saying to us our friend the fire chief stood glowering out in front of the garage all morning i think he would have gone to great lengths to prevent our machine's incarceration in a freight car the proprietor of the garage gave us his opinion of course we drive pretty light machines around here and yours is heavy and your wheels are uncommon narrow but that engine of yours sure ain't no toy i'd go through if i was you i wouldn't quit for a little mud no sir and only a little mud at that scornfully echoed the fire chief and supposing we slide off one of those bridges or turn turtle in a ditch asked we the chief scratched his head but his determination was undaunted she'd be kind of heavy to fall on you he grinned all the same if that car was mine i'd go right on plumb across hell itself i would to finish what you have begun to see it through at whatever cost that seems to be the spirit here it is probably the spirit of the west the spirit that has doubled and trebled these towns in a few years the consideration as to whether it is the wisest and most expedient thing to do has no part in their process of reasoning that is exactly the point theirs not to reason why theirs not to make reply theirs but to do and die only they do not seem to die they thrive gloriously all the same if this country of ours ever gets into the war there will be the making of a second balaclava regiment in a town of illinois beginning with an r and a certain fire chief should make a gallant captain but magnificent as is their indomitability as a quality of character for us the instance to wreck a valuable car which we might never afford to replace for the sake of saying that we were not stopped by any such trifle as mud seems more foolhardy than courageous nevertheless they have in some way imbued us with their spirit to such a degree that we have countermanded the freight car and although the mud is not a bit better have put chains on and are going to start enthusiasm was no name for it the town turned out to see us off the fire chief drove out his engine in all its brass and scarlet resplendency the ban of our cowardly leanings toward freight cars was lifted and they saw us off on our muddy way rejoicing we are glad to have seen this little town maybe the contagion of its enthusiasm will remain with us permanently 
End of Driving the Lincoln Highway, Chicago to Rochelle, Illinois, in 1915. By Emily Post. Read by Sue Anderson.